I want to speak to your hearts about daily direction. Come on, say daily direction. Praise God. And we certainly need daily direction on tonight. And how you start your day many times determines what type of day you're going to have. Haven't you heard of the saying that, you know, they must have woke up on the wrong side or got out up on the wrong side of the bed or uh, this or that? Uh, we have so many attitudes that we, we deal with, uh, with individuals, praise God. But with God, when we have daily direction, he's going to pave the way or the best way or the best, best path for us to travel. And we rely on so many uh, man-made systems when we're making our decisions uh, throughout the day. And we're planning our days out. Uh, if we don't know which way to go, we flip on the GPS, right? And it gives us that direction. If we're wondering if we should uh, take an umbrella or not, we uh, look to the GFS uh, system. And all of these systems, Google, if we want knowledge of this thing or that thing. But the problem with these systems, although uh, these systems are very helpful and very useful, uh, they are not 100% accurate all of the time. Proverbs 14 and 12 says, there is a way that seems right unto a man. The key word here is seems. It gives the impression that you are making an informed decision that is right. But how many times that have, have we made decisions in our lives and, and we feel that that is the right decision, but a little later on down the road you find out that it was a bad decision? And you said within yourself, if I could have only known then what I know now, things would have been so much different. Maybe I'm the only one tonight that's felt that way or been in that situation. But God said in Psalms 23 that he will lead us down the best path for our lives. What does that mean? There's uh, uh, various types of paths that we can take in our lives, but God is saying that if you look to me for daily direction, I'm going to lead you down the best path for your life. And God has the wisdom we need and the guidance and the direction, but it's not going to happen automatically. Every single morning we have to humble ourselves and we have to surrender to God and we have to ask him for this daily direction. God has all the answers, right? He's omniscient. He's all-knowing. But he's not going to force that knowledge on us. We have to surrender ourselves and humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God, and he will give us that daily direction. A few weeks ago, there was a terrible accident in my city. There was three individuals uh, in the car, and the car was traveling at a high rate of speed and lost control and it hit a pole and one of the individuals died, the other two were in critical condition. Um, and I didn't know all of these details uh, at the time, but I came home and my wife had mentioned to me, she said, did you see any accident when you went to work this morning? And I said, no, I didn't see anything. And she said, it was right about that time you're supposed to go uh, that way. Uh, we thought the accident had happened a little bit further down from where I get on the expressway. Uh, but come to find out the accident happened right before, right at the point where I get on the expressway. And what was very, very, uh, I don't want to say strange, but it was happened at 4.35 a.m. in the morning. And every morning I leave my house at 4.30, and I'm actually at that exact location where that accident happened around 4.35. Amazing. Praise God. So I said that to say this, when we're talking about daily directions, right? Uh, daily direction is actually daily protection as well. And before I leave the house in the morning, I pray and I ask God to protect me over the dangerous highways. I ask him to protect me from danger seen and unseen. And I even get real specific and say, Lord, don't let me hit anybody. Don't let anyone hit me. So at that time, I did not know anything about this accident that was about to happen, right? So that was protecting me from dangers unseen, right? Didn't know anything about it. But had I would have left my house at 430, see, that's how God does, doesn't he? He's a good God, isn't he? He knew that that accident was going to happen at 435, and I would have been right there. So no doubt he allowed delay either caused me to get dressed a little faster that morning, where I left the house a couple minutes early, but he spared my life. And I just want to tell him thank you tonight. Can't you think even of a time in your life that God has spared your life? Don't be like the nine lepers that walked away like he didn't do anything, but be like the one that will turn and just say thank you. Come on, can you tell him thank you tonight? So Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust in the Lord 
and lean not unto your own understanding. But in all of your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. So to obtain this daily direction from God, the first thing you must do is trust in the Lord with your whole heart. How many are willing to do that tonight? Are you willing to trust God with your whole heart? And then secondly, it says, lean not to your own understanding. What does that mean? Don't trust yourself making decisions by yourself, right? Always consult God in everything. Isn't that right? And lastly, it says, acknowledge God in everything. And if you'll follow these steps, God said that he will direct your path. If you do those three things, God said, I'm going to do something. I'm going to give you that daily direction. And he will give us that daily direction today. Psalms 119 says, the word of God is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And sometimes we tend to make our plans without consulting God. Can you say that's a big mistake? And then we wonder why we struggle and we feel like our whole lives is uphill. You're right. You take one step forward, it feels like, and you take two steps back when you're not looking to God for daily direction. We must ask God first. Pastor Joel always says that if you put God first, your life will go so much better when he is first place, right? Not just putting him first place, but keeping him first place on a daily basis, right? We're not fair weather saints, are we? Do I have any fair weather saints in here? Y'all know what fair weather it is? When it's sunshine and everything's going good in your life, you're hallelujah, amen. But when you find yourself down in the valley, you've lost your praise. I don't know about you tonight, but I'm not a fair weather Christian tonight. <laughs> praise God, because I understand that life is full of mountaintop experiences, but it's also full of valley low experiences. But knowing that God said in his word that I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I will be with you even until the end of the world. Knowing that and believing that and having faith in God, looking to him for daily direction, praise God, it's going to take you through those trials, those tribulations, those tests. When you feel like giving up, it's going to take you through. Do I have a witness tonight? So we must keep God first and search for his guidance on a daily basis. In the Lord's Prayer, Jesus prayed, give us this day our daily bread. He didn't say our weekly bread or our monthly bread, but he said our daily, daily bread. So God is a God of freshness, and he has new instructions for us daily, and he likes to do new things. How many know that God likes to do new things? We don't serve a stale God, but he likes to do new and fresh things in our lives. Things that we've never experienced or seen before. The Bible says that I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have it entered into the heart of men the things. Someone said the good things that God has prepared for them that love him. And Isaiah 43 and 19 says, behold, I will do a new thing. Lamentations 3 and 23 says, his mercies are new every morning. Can you imagine that? Every single morning you wake up, God's got some new mercies for you. Hallelujah. The ones you had yesterday, those are yesterday's mercies. He's got something greater planned for you for tomorrow morning. When you wake up, you're going to have some new mercies. Praise God. New graces in the morning. I was just thinking, uh, you know, uh, progressive, they have the bundling, right? Uh, everybody thinks that progressive has the corner market on the bundling, right? But God's been bundling for you since the beginning of time. David says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. If that ain't a bundle, I don't know what is. <laughs> Look at the fruit of the spirit, the nine fruits of love and joy and peace and all of those things. If that's not a great bundle, I don't know what is. Praise God. So God doesn't just do one thing, but he does multiple things, and he keeps on doing it. There's a song that says he keeps on blessing me over and over and over again. Praise God. So God supplied Israel with manna bread to sustain them in the desert. And they had to gather this manna uh, on a daily basis, and they couldn't save it because it was spoiled if they tried to save it until the next day. So what does this tell us? It tells us that yesterday's information may not work today. And that's why it's necessary for us to stay connected with God on a daily basis. I like using this analogy. We are the plug, y'all, and God is the electrical outlet. The plug 
you need that power, right? If you're trying to plug in to, for that lamp to come on, you need the plug, right? Or you need the outlet, right? But the outlet doesn't need you. It already has the power there, right? So we've got to stay connected to God. We've got to stay plugged in. Come on, just plug it in. That commercial, plug it in, plug it in. <laughs> but we just can't plug in on one day, skip two days and then plug in on another day. We have to make it a habit. And in order to become a habit, we have to practice it on a daily basis, right? And as you do it, the more and more you do it, the more and more you consult God and look to him on a daily basis, it becomes just part of who you are. Without even thinking about it, you facing situations in your life and you're just going to consult God. It's just what you do. It's part of your makeup. It's part of your uh, character. So don't get stuck on autopilot because what worked in the past may not work today. You've got to stay open to change and be willing to try something new. The 15th chapter of John, Jesus said that I am the true vine and you are the branches. And he said, apart from me, you can do nothing. So if we don't stay plugged into Jesus, we might think we're doing something, but we're not doing anything. He said, apart from me, you can do nothing. Y'all believe that tonight? Y'all quiet. But when we rely on him, he'll take us from victory to victory. But he may not do it in the same way. So don't get stuck on routines and traditions, but seek God daily. Psalm 63, David said, you are my God and early will I seek you. It's something about seeking God early in the morning. Anybody ever experienced seeking God early in the morning? How quiet it is before everybody gets up and moving in the house and all the noise. It's something about having that quiet time with God in the morning. Now, I don't know what time you have to get up for work or different things, but I have to be at work at 5 o'clock, so I'm up very, very early. And it's just a peaceful time in the morning when you can just hear the voice of the Lord. He's speaking to you and dealing with you very early in the morning. And I believe David, when he uh, said this, he experienced that in its fullness. And he says, you are my God and early will I seek you. So God doesn't want you to get hooked on a formula. We're full of formulas, right? But God wants you to be hooked on him and in him and plugged into him. Praise God. But when you develop this habit of going to God for your daily bread, daily direction, he will lead you down the path again that is best for your life. So many times we get so caught up in looking at other people's lives and wishing sometimes that we were in their shoes and we wish we had their destiny and we wish we had what they had. But God, if you seek him, he's going to lead you down the best path for your life. You might not think that it's the best, best path because maybe it's, what, it's not the path that you would have taken for your own lives, right? Because we have our own ideals and our own ways that we think that our lives should go. But I read that scripture earlier that there is a way that seems right unto a man, right? It, it seems right to us, but God has a plan for each and every one of our lives. It's tailor-made just for you. In other words, I can't live your life. You can't live my life. You've got to do what God instructs you to do. Praise God. So remember this, that yesterday's manner is not going to be good for today. Can't try to store up those mercies and those blessings from yesteryears. God, you've got to let those go because God's got some greater things prepared for you and for your life. That's tailor-made for you. God said that you are a masterpiece. Each and every one of us, we're masterpieces. And God's got some things that uh, prepared for us that we can't even imagine. As they say, it would blow your mind right now if God would show you everything that he has planned for you in your life. If you keep him first. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And what's going to happen? All these other things, all these other things that we're stressing out and running after and trying to get God is saying, keep me first place and I'll take care of the rest. You don't have to try to make all of these provisions for yourself. God said, just keep me first and I'll take care of all the provisions in your life. So remember, yesterday's manner is not going to be good for today. So if you develop this habit of going to God for fresh manna, I believe and declare that God is going to lead you down the best path for your life. He's going to bring the right people into your life. 
A lot of people that are in our lives right now, maybe they shouldn't be there, but we're holding on to them, right? And God's saying, I want to take you somewhere, but I can't take you there with that individual in your life. So God's going to bring the right people and place them in your life. And he's going to take you to the fullness of your destiny in Jesus' name. And if you believe that and receive that tonight, come on and say amen. 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 Come on, put your hands together for Jesus. He is so worthy tonight, isn't he? How many know we serve a good God? And how many know that he commands us in the 150th Psalm, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I wonder if we could all stand tonight and after hearing the word tonight, hopefully you have pondered, those of you that don't know the Lord and the pardoning of your sins, hopefully you have pondered in your, your heart and asked yourself the question, what must I do to be saved? Giving your life to Christ is the most important decision you could ever make, and it is the best decision that you could ever make in your life. Jesus is the only one that has all the answers to our problems. Matter of fact, he is the answer to all of our problems. But if you're not in him, you won't seek him for that daily direction. So if you're here tonight and you don't know Jesus and the pardon of your sins, I just want to lead you in the sinner's prayer. Every head bowed, every eye closed. And I just want you to repeat after me, Lord Jesus, forgive me for all of my sins, for I am sorry that I have sinned before heaven and in thy sight. I believe that Jesus died for me and that he rose for me. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Come on, put your hands together tonight. If you prayed that prayer tonight and you believed it in your heart, I want you to know today that you are a child of the Most High God. You are a child of the Most High God. God bless you tonight.